In Calculus 1, you learn how to take derivatives. With just a few simple rules, you can take the derivative of any function you come across. This is an important skill to learn because physics and engineering are full of derivatives. The challenge, though, is that you often have to solve derivatives backwards. This means that physics gives you the derivative and asks you to find the original function. Here's an example. Suppose you know that function y obeys this derivative, dy dx equals 3. You can pretty easily reverse engineer this into the original function, 3x, and check that it works. But physics and engineering usually give you more complicated equations, which even the best mathematicians can't solve by hand. That's why we have the Euler-Cromer method to get a computer to do the solving for us. Here's how it works. We turn the derivative back into a slope formula. Then we multiply by the change in x, which we're going to make into a small number called the step size. Then we split the change in the function into its next value minus its current value. Then we add the current value to the other side. We now have an equation that says that if we know the current value of the function, have an expression for the derivative, and a small number for the step size, we can calculate the next value of the function. Once we have the next value, we can repeat this process by feeding it into the current values spot in the equation and then get the value after that. As long as our step size is small, we can repeat this process as many times as we'd like. Now, this process is tedious, which is why we need a computer to do the boring arithmetic for us. In the description below is a link to this code that you can copy, modify, and run to use the Euler-Cromer method. The computer will follow the instructions given in this code line by line, ignoring any text that begins with a hash mark. These ignored pieces of text are called comments and are there to explain what the code does. Let's walk through the code to understand what the computer is doing. Line 1 asks the computer to use the Visual Python library. Line 4 creates a graph for our function. Lines 7 and 8 set the initial values for x and y. Line 9 sets the step size for x. As mentioned before, this needs to be a small number. Line 11 sets up what we call a loop to repeat lines 13 through 18 of the code as many times as we want. To learn more about loops, see the video linked in the comments below. Line 13 sets the frame rate for the code's animation. You can change this number to speed up or slow down the animation, but it does not change the mathematical results of the code. Line 15 is the rearranged slope formula that we derived earlier in this video. This line is the heart of the Euler-Cromer method. It takes the current value of the function and adds the derivative times the step size, then saves that new value over the current value. Line 17 moves x forward one step on the graph. Line 18 adds our new point to the graph. And line 20 sends a message to the screen that we're finished. We saw earlier that a function with a derivative of 3 should be a line with slope 3. Let's run the program and see if that's what we get. In this animation, you can see the code moving forward in steps to produce the function, which turns out to be a line with slope 3. If we change the 3 here to a 5 and then run the code again, we get a line with a slope of 5. We can also change the formula for the derivative in line 15 to anything we want. Suppose we change the formula to the current value of y and make our initial value of y 1. We'd be looking for a function whose derivative is itself and there's only one function that meets that description, e to the x. If we run the program with this new formula for the derivative, that's exactly what we get. You should now be able to use the Euler-Cromer method to find a function based on its first derivative. Follow the link in the description below to use this code to apply the Euler-Cromer method for the following formulas for the derivative and initial values. In the next video, we'll look at how we use the Euler-Cromer method in physics to relate an object's velocity to its position.